founder of Code Liberation Foundation, a 501c3 in the U.S. that works to promote women and non-binary individuals in the STEAM field to make creative works. And I also am a lecturer at Goldsmiths in uh, independent games and playable experience design, which is an MA I created um, and I run. So that's what I do. And I came here to Indicade to speak on a panel with Sherry Huss about making and how maker culture has intersected with video games over the last like seven or eight years. I use video games to bring people into closer physical contact and to get them to reconnect with each other in the physical world. That's how I use the medium. Uh, I made a game recently called Bot Party and it's a game about holding hands. So it has different game modes and in one of the game modes you work with a group of people to hold hands at different times and the idea is that it fosters in intimacy and interconnectivity and it brings you a little bit closer to the people that you don't know and sparks conversations. I feel like people are really disconnected and we spend a lot of time looking at technology to kind of be further apart from each other even though we're really close online and I wanted to take that online experience and kind of embody it in the physical network and have people form connections in that physical network and that was my inspiration for the game. I think had I not been a creative first I would have had anything to lecture about so I got hired in my job based on the strength of my game work and my creative work so I bring that directly into the classroom in how I share my practice with people I'm, that I'm teaching and collaborating with because I believe it's important to have a conversation about play and games that's a little bit bigger than traditional the tr medium has traditionally allowed for and that's how my practice has influenced my teaching I, I think that they really work in tandem I'll be obsessed with a project and I'll want to share what I'm learning with my students and then they'll start playing with it and then I'll learn from them and then this conversation happens where we're kind of sharing ideas and creating together I might be off on one project and they might be on theirs or we might be working together on a project and I find that kind of teaching really rewarding because it's also part of my creative practice and I feel that teaching when you have exhibition output and you get to take your students' works into venues really impacts my life and impacts their life and it's a win-win. Usually you don't have a lot of time to engage people in a physical experience because you have to train them about the medium itself. It's not a controller so you can't just press buttons to jump around on a screen and there's no familiar familiarity with the like control schema. So you have to be like, okay, here's a box, here's what I want you to do with it, and then they have to learn about what is possible with the device, and then they have to learn how they can interact with people and be able to play a successful game in like three to five minutes. And that's a lot to ask out of somebody, so you have to really tighten this, the, the kind of experience of building an interaction loop, and it's gotta be really precise, and you have to test like constantly to like test an idea, does it work, does it not work, and you have to really listen to the players and like strip out anything that's like hard to understand or not immediate. Well, I've been always building, I guess what you could call local multiplayer experiences. So there are games that involve several people. I've only ever made one game that involved just one person, but even then it was a spectacle game. So it was about watching that one person play and I think that exploring our interconnectivity and the way that we connect with one, one another is really important. And I have done a lot of that. In future, I hope to get larger funding to do more of it, like on scale. And that's the hardest part with these games is getting support to take something from a prototype that I show at something like Indicate to something that could be like put at MoMA or something. And that, that funding gap is huge and really hard to, that's where I'm at now. That's the goal is to get the next round of funding so I can build something really large. I mean, I'm not finished with Bot Party yet. Okay. <laughs> I, I see a lot. We just ported it to Bluetooth, which I'm really excited about. And it's my hope that from Bluetooth, I'll go to tablet and I want to design. I have three game modes right now. I want to release 10 and I want to release it as an app and try and sell it because I, I want to figure out a way to like sell it either as like plushies or I'm, I'm trying to work out a way I can get it in the hands of a lot more people. Because when you prototype these experiences, it's really fun and it's really awesome and it's really important to have platforms for that. 
But what is more important is finding a way to actually like get it to a lot of people. <laughs> and Indicate is great and GDC is great, but you're limited to the games community. And now I'm really, I want to like engage kids in their bedroom, like when they're having a sleepover with their friends or whatever. So I'm like, how do you do that? What's that look like? <laughs> I think that the biggest thing is I'm going to have to figure out a production pipeline in China, if you want my honest opinion. I, I think these sorts of games are expensive and you have to do a lot of engineering to bring the cost down enough that you can mass produce them. And then Kickstarter is like the obvious first attempt. And beyond that, you can seek funding at like the public level or at the startup level. I think uh, Beast of Balance did it really well with their Kickstarter project. It's constantly a battle to like work out a medium for selling physical games. It, it's not an immediate path to market. If you're going to go make a video game, you'd be like, okay, this goes on the iPad. That goes in everyone's house immediately. In this situation, you've got, okay, it's a board game or a physical game or an installation-based game that you're trying to get through into people's houses with an iPad component. So it's got like a different proposition. I'm, I'm to that same point with collaboration where now I'm like thinking, how do we have a larger impact and go to the next level with it? Because we've done a lot of teaching and I feel like we've had a huge impact in helping women make video games around the world. And that is undeniable at this point. I, I think our track record speaks for itself. That said, how do we get it so we have something that's sustainable in more places than just the US or the UK. How do I make it so people can unroll their own version of it? Maybe either call it collaboration or not, call it something else entirely, or just use it as like a set of materials and best practices to integrate into their own communities. There are completely untapped market opportunities there to make games for women, about women, and, and to speak to women's experiences in a way that obviously very few people are doing. Because if you've got 52% of women you know, playing video games out of the 100% in total, it makes sense that you might be able to have games creators come from that 52%. This is just a thought. <laughs>